Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to the next episode of our Minecraft modding tutorial series for 1.15. In this episode, we're going to be covering custom food items as well as adding some custom effects to them when you eat them. And I'm going to be moving a little bit faster now because by this point, I'm assuming that you've either mastered or memorized somewhat the process of creating an item. And we're just going to be repeating that process now, but uh, with a few extra steps. So come over to your registry handler class in your util package and uh, we're going to make a new a registry object just in our items category here um, and we're this is gonna be just like a regular item so it's gonna be public static final registry object now this is where it starts to change a little bit so you could just put item in here and then uh, in line create the, uh, the item but because I want our my food item and you know possibly your food item to be a little bit more advanced than that I'm actually gonna make a custom class for our food item and you're gonna depending on you know what kind of food you want to make uh, you might want to make a new class for every single food item that you have so uh, this food item that I'm gonna make is gonna be a poison apple and we'll get more in depth into that later but uh, I'm gonna make my class poison apple just the name of my item so poison apple and uh, we'll be creating this class later but uh, just put here whatever the name of your, your custom class is going to be. You can name it literally anything you want, but I would recommend using um, the, just the name of your object. So poison apple, and then the name is going to be poison underscore apple. And just like last time, it's going to equal items dot register. And uh, we're going to pass in the name, which is going to be, again, poison underscore apple, uh, comma. And then again, just like we did up here, we're just going to type uh, poison apple. Again, that's the name of our custom class we're gonna make in a second. Uh, two colons and then new, uh, just to create a new poison apple object. All right, so this is our item made, but we need to make this class. So come over to your tutorial folder, your main folder, go to items, open that up, and we can right click new Java class, and we can name this again, exactly what we put here. So poison apple and we can add that to the repository. And uh, let's really quickly just hover over poison apple and import class. Now, you're gonna have some errors here. That's because we need to go to poison apple or whatever you named your, your custom item class. And we need to make sure it extends item. And make sure you import item as well. Uh, there we go, import class. And we also wanna hover over it again and create constructor matching super. Now, uh, there's a few things we need to do in here to customize our, um, our food item. I wanna mention really quickly that uh, this items folder is over time gonna fill up with your custom items. So don't be afraid to make a few classes for each food item. Uh, it's really up to you if you wanna do them in line or if you wanna make your own class, uh, but just thought I'd, I'd mention that. So anyway, back in your class, uh, we wanna get rid of this, um, uh, this parameter here, this argument. And inside of super, we can get rid of this as well. Uh, first thing, of course, you want to do is set our properties. So new item dot properties, um, and then let's make a new uh, space here. We're gonna we're gonna give ourselves a bit of space because all of this is gonna be where our custom stuff is gonna be added. So um, we want to do dot group first to set our, our tab. So I'm gonna set mine to my custom tab, tutorial dot tab. But again, if you wanted to do a vanilla tab. You could do item group dots and you could set a vanilla creative tab, um, but I'm going to set mine to my custom tab. Uh, next thing I want to do is add uh, a dot food. Now, again, if you don't really know uh, any of these methods, you can always just type a dot and it'll show you all of the possible methods you can use for properties. Um, there's a ton in here and I'll go over them for food specifically, um, but just know that there's some more that you can mess around with. So we want to do dot set food. Uh, which makes it a food object dot food and this is going to pass in a, a food object uh, and we're going to build it ourselves so you can type new food dot builder in all capitals uh sorry just the first letter is capital actually um and i'm gonna make a new space down here uh, oh this is not cooperating with me a new space um dots there we go i want it to be um sort of in line with uh this method here um, now we can actually customize our food object. So uh, every time you want to add something new to your food object, just make a new dot and then choose from this list of methods. We can set the hunger amount. So this is going to be how many hunger bars it fills when you eat it. And I believe the number that you put in, in here is divided by two. 
Uh, so if we were to put, for example, like eight in here, um, this would restore four hunger bars. Uh, if you were to put just one in here, for example, that would be half of a hunger. So I'm gonna put, um, let's put four. So this is gonna restore two hunger bars. Um, we can also add a dot saturation as well. Um, and this is gonna be the saturation value. Uh, if you don't know what saturation is, essentially it's um, how full you feel after you eat something. So like how long it takes for you to start losing um, hunger again after you've reached max hunger, or sorry, max uh, like hunger bars. Uh, it's kind of like a hidden hunger bar above the main one. So um, I don't want this to be super high, but I guess we could set it to like, I don't know, like 1.2 F or something or 1.3 F, whatever you want really. Uh, you can mess around with that yourself. Um, now, uh, we could be done here. If you want if you want your food object to be done here, you can just type dot build. And uh, that will create, uh, that will finish the food objects. Um, so wh whenever you're done building your food objects, just end it with the last statement being dot build. But I uh, wanna add some effects. So if you'd like to add an effect to your food item, uh, what you can do is right before the build, type dot effects, and you need to pass in a new effect instance. So new, effect instance, and this is gonna take in your effect. So uh, what I want this poison apple to do when you eat it is have, uh, well, it's gonna give you nausea and poison, uh, but I also want it to have a, a smallish chance to give you hunger as well. So what we can do is set effects dot, let's do nausea first, nausea, comma. So that's your effects, and you can choose again uh, from this list of effects here, any of them, any potion effect really. Uh, so I'm gonna do nausea then the next value needs to be um, how long you're gonna have the effect in seconds, or I guess it would be in ticks. So the way you calculate uh, in ticks, uh, every one second in, my in Minecraft is a single, is 20 ticks. So what you can do, if you pull out your calculator, uh, take however many seconds you want um, your, uh, your potion effect to last. I want mine to last 15 seconds. So I'm gonna do 15 seconds, and then always just multiply it by 20. And that is the value you should pass in there, so 300. Um, another thing you could do if you don't want to use your calculator is just type the amount of seconds you want, 15, and then multiply it by 20, just like that. Uh, but I'm gonna put 300, so 300 ticks. And then the last one is the level. So uh, level would be like nausea one, nausea two. Uh, this It's like how intense, how amplified the potion effect is. Um, similar to how you can have like speed one, speed two, same sort of idea. So I'm just gonna put nausea one. Uh, then after this uh, effect distance, we need to make a comma and pass in one more value, which is the um, the chance for this effect to happen. Now, this is like whether or not the effect will actually occur when you eat the object. Uh, it's like a rarity chance. So if we were to put, for example, like 0.2 F, uh, what this would mean is that there is a 20% chance that when, whenever you eat one of these uh, poison apples that you would get this effect. Um, this is similar to what like rotten flesh does and uh, I, I think like uncooked chicken stuff that gives you hunger. Um, that's what this does. But um, I, I'm gonna set it to one, which will make it happen every single time. One is essentially a 100% chance. Uh, but just know that you can set a probability if you'd like. All right, so uh, probability of 100. Now, this is great, but I wanna add multiple effects. So if you wanna add a new effect, just copy this line, paste it down below, and you have a new effect. Now, we wanna change this, of course, because I don't wanna just give nausea twice. So uh, our second effect, I want it to be poison. Uh, I'm gonna keep it at 15 seconds, just like the other effect. Uh, this is, I'm gonna actually make this poison too, just so it's a little bit more uh, dangerous. And I want this to also be a 100% chance to occur when you eat the object. And I'm gonna add one more effect just so we can check out the probability factor. Uh, this is gonna be the hunger that I was talking about. So there is a chance for you to get hunger. And again, 15 seconds of hunger. I'm just gonna have it be level one, but I do want it to be a 0.3 F chance. So this is a 30% chance um, for this uh, effect to happen whenever you eat the uh, the poison apple. If you wanted it to be single digit, uh, um, what's the word? Single digit um, uh, chance or probability, you could just add a zero here and put three and that would be 3%. But uh, I want this to be 30% chance. All right, so uh, this is pretty much done for my object that I want. Uh, just know though, 
that before build, there's a lot of other things you can add. If you add a dot here, you can see them. So like, for example, we have uh, fast to eat. If you were to add that, what this would do is make your object a lot faster to eat in the game. You could also, if we come back here to this menu, um, you could also set dot meat. Uh, if you added this, what th this would mean is um, you could feed this object or this, uh, this item to wolves, uh, just like you can feed a meat object to a wolf. And then I think there's one other dot uh, set always edible. And this will allow us to actually eat the object, uh, the, the food object, even when we're not hungry. And this is sort of what um, the golden apple does, where you can eat a golden apple, even if you have full hunger. So I'm actually gonna keep this because I think I want my poison apple to work similar to like a golden apple where you can always eat it. Uh, but other than that, I don't know if there's any other interesting ones. Yeah, I think those are the only really important ones to talk about. Uh, but just know that you can set uh, whatever, you know, whatever extra properties you'd like for your food builder. And yeah, so this is the uh, poison apple done. Just to run through it one more time, we've got uh, the item properties setting the group to our custom item tab. Uh, and then we're setting it to food. So dot food in the properties uh, makes this a food object. And we're passing in a food and we're building it with the builder and setting the hunger to four, the saturation to 1.2, we're having three different effects that can occur when you eat it. And then we're also making it uh, edible, even if you're not hungry, and then finally building the objects. All right, so now that we're done with that, uh, we now need to do what we do with every uh, object, item object, is create the JSON. So go over to your resources folder, assets, your mod ID, models, item, and inside of your item folder, uh, what we can do is just copy Ruby, uh, the Ruby JSON that we made uh, for our regular object, because this is just a regular object, and we can just paste it into item and change the name to uh, poison underscore apple. Refactor, add to repository, and again, change the name here from Ruby to poison underscore apple. And I will include this uh, as a paste bin in the description again, even though uh, I've talked about it before, but it is the exact same JSON as any other regular object. So just keep that in mind. Um, all right, so now all we have to do is add, uh, oh, well, actually, we have to do the, the language folder. So go to lang, ian underscore us.json. Uh, just copy the Ruby object we have up here, paste it below, uh, make sure there's a comma there if it's uh, not the last one. And then instead of Ruby, this is gonna be our poison underscore apple. Um, and then last thing to do is add the texture. So if we come to our desktop here, uh, I have a poison underscore apple texture. So what I can do, and again, this is 16 by 16, just a regular uh, item texture. And it does have to be the same name as you set in your registry handler here, this name right here. I'm just gonna open up my uh, textures, items folder, and just drag it into here. Drag it in and refactor, add to repository. And there we go, poison underscore apple.png. All right, so we're all done now. We can launch the game and let's go check it out. One quick thing I forgot is I actually copied this line here for Poison Apple and didn't actually change the real name in the game. So instead of just setting this to Ruby, we do want this to say Poison Apple, uh, and then we can file, save all, and actually run the game this time. All right, so we're inside of the game, and if we come over to our uh, Creative Inventory tab and we go to our Poison Apple here, we can see that it is in the game. And let's go to Game Mode Survival so we can test it out. And it should, we should be able to eat it even if we're not hungry because we did set that. So yeah, we can we can eat it. Uh, and if we come down here, let's just try it out. All right, so we did get poison and nausea, but you can see that we did not get the hunger and that's because there was only a 20% chance to get that effect. So actually this object is working perfectly um, and we can just try it a couple times and see if maybe we'll get the hunger effects. And there we go. You can see the third time we ate it, we did get hunger, that 20% chance. Uh, and we can just um, use milk to get rid of the effects. But yeah, so now you have a custom item, a custom food item in the game with uh, some custom effects. One thing I should mention is that in vanilla Minecraft, every effect instance starts out with a uh, regular value of one for its level, its amplifier. And then this amplifier value is actually just gonna increase it by another factor. So by setting this to one, you're not actually getting um, nausea one, you're actually getting nausea two in the game. And you might've saw that during my, uh, my demonstration a few seconds ago. So if you want this to just be regular nausea one, you would actually wanna set this to zero, not one. So uh, I made that mistake earlier and I'm correcting it right now. I would want these to be zero and actually I'd want poison to be one. And what this would actually do is have nausea be nausea one, poison would be poison two, 
and hunger would be po uh, hunger one. So hopefully that clears it up and I apologize for messing that up earlier. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot about food and effects and I will see you in the next episode.